Hi again then guys, and welcome to episode 25 of Weekend Warriors, the review series for the sports coupes, sports cars, luxury coupes, luxury sports cars, etc. of Gran Turismo. And to some degree, you can say that modern muscle cars, such as the new Camaro, the new Challenger, and a couple of others, but not many, could be considered to be not just muscle cars, but also sports coupes. Large, powerful ones, but sports coupes nonetheless. Back in the day, of course, there weren't really many sports coupes at all. But muscle cars are great rivals on Gran Turismo 2 vehicles like that. They have, in many cases, better numbers than some sports cars. They offer pretty good bang-for-buck value. They give a lot of power for the money. They're pretty good in a straight line, although as far as Gran Turismo goes, not quite as good as they arguably deserve to be, especially the modern ones, and they have the potential to be pretty good all-round vehicles, and also multi-purpose vehicles. So, how does this vehicle fare? Because this is a pretty popular muscle car on Gran Turismo, the new shape Dodge Challenger SRT8. You get the 6.1 litre Hemi, it's of course rear-wheel drive, it's a pretty large vehicle, not quite as wide as the Camaro, but a bit taller, and it's, as I said, a popular choice. You see them fairly often online, along with the newer shaped Camaro, they're the two obvious choices, and also the Mustang. Although the Mustang these days, it can be called a muscle car, definitely, but it doesn't feel as much of a muscle car anymore. It feels more like, I don't know, kind of a class of its own. A sports coupe definitely to some degree, and definitely still a muscle car, but not as much of a pure muscle car as the Challenger and Camaro. Maybe that's just me, but that's the way the Mustang feels to me now, almost like it's in kind of a category of its own. Now this particular vehicle is a Hemi, so of course you're going to get big numbers, big power, big torque, big engine. The power is 833 horsepower, fully tuned, you're looking at 726 foot-pounds of torque, and also, of course, big weight as well. It's a big car, it's a heavy car, 1393 kilos, fully tuned. To put that into perspective is roughly the same as what you'd expect from a fully tuned Chrysler 300C. So. Pretty big, pretty heavy. The PP, when fully tuned, is also pretty high, 605. That's very high for a muscle-based vehicle. But, not only does it have big numbers on paper, it has big numbers in use. Because this car, although, as I already said, not quite as quick, in terms of top speed in particular, as it arguably should be on Gran Turismo, along with the Camaro, is very competitive. You can use these muscle cars really well. Now, would I recommend racing it at 605 pp? Mm, probably not. Under certain circumstances you could do reasonably well with it, but generally speaking, no, not really, because you can get pretty healthily tuned GTRs, you can get Tommy Kara ZZ2s, you can get roofs, various other vehicles, which, even in a straight line, can quite handily beat a Challenger. It does, though, have its uses, for sure. Anywhere around 500 to, say, 575 pp, you stand a pretty good chance of getting a good amount of performance out of the car. Now, speaking of performance, the peak speed that you can expect from this car is, as I said, not as quick as I personally think it should be. But, that being said, it can do around 240 miles per hour. That's without NOS, without Slipstream. Obviously, with those things, it can do far more. Now, that doesn't sound that great for a car with 833 horsepower, and unfortunately, the same goes for the newer shape Camaro. That car also does around 240. So, for top speed, they're really not that impressive, and that is kind of disappointing, especially given that some older muscle cars, like the old school Plymouth Cuda, can be tuned to do 264 miles per hour under its own power. That just doesn't make sense. Yes, it's a slightly more powerful car, but not that much more powerful. If that car is deserving of having that kind of performance, or an old Charger, for instance, can do 245, 
or an old Pontiac Tempest can do around 245-ish as well, then why can't these cars do more? Well, there really is no good reason on Gran Turismo, they just don't. Around the track though, it's another story, because these cars are so much better than their sheer size and weight, would have people assume, and that can be very useful. Cars which are very large can easily be underestimated. You can assume, not necessarily as a driver, but as a spectator, that people using these cars probably aren't that much of a threat. Maybe they're quick on the straights, but not so much through the corners. And with a big heavy car, that is, to some degree, correct. But with the Challenger, with the Camaro, and to some degree with the Mustang, though the Mustang is a bit more tail happy, you can make these cars excellent track cars. They can more than bring the fight to sports cars, some race cars, certainly super saloons, some supercars even. They are very useful. And especially when you consider the price, 40 grand is pretty good value for a full premium with the kind of power and ability that this car has. The Camaro as well, I would say, offers excellent advantages over sports cars in that regard. The kind of power and torque that you're looking at from these cars is far beyond something like a BMW M3. You just don't get the kind of power out of something like an M3 of, say, the E46 shape, that you can get out of a car like this. The tunability really is there. So, overall, it's not as quick as it arguably deserves to be, but if you're a fan of muscle cars, modern muscle cars of course in particular, you won't be disappointed by the Challenger. It's an excellent track car, has strong acceleration, and handles itself remarkably well for such a large vehicle. The value for money is excellent, and so of course, I'd recommend checking it out. But that's it for this pick overall. I'll see you guys next time. And as always, thanks for watching.